I get the cheat code, I'm a beast They should've never let me out of lease Stop out of cap, I'm just tryna see You really back what you talk on the beat They put me in, I'ma walk on the beat I eat my plate and it make me obese I been pushing lyrics like a kingpin And when the day we got no rest Hey, guys Hold on, hey. happy holidays One time for Wendy's glasses Happy holidays Hey, hello, they matched the sweater Did you get those from Petty? Is that, I the, got is that what these, they say? Petty? Uh, Petty. Um, I didn't buy anything when I went to Europe this time. Wow. Except Chanel hand cream. Yeah. Those glasses are fire. Chanel fire-o. hand cream. Yeah. Flex. Yeah. Smell. Scratch wow. and sniff. Is it like an anti-aging cream or was it a moisturizer? No, just just great moisturizer? <laughs> I do have their anti-aging cream. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, listen, man. You know, yeah. these, That's these companies invest cream. a lot of oh, yeah. money in making, you know, yeah. magic potions and helping people's skin, you know, stay rejuvenated exactly. and revitalized. Chanel and hand cream. I got to look that up. Yeah. Didn't know that they made hand cream. They listen, make bro, everything. I'm sorry, but if you're on, if you're next to the Eiffel Tower on your vacation and you don't have any Chanel hand cream, There's what a wasted wrong. trip. Yes. What a wasted trip. Yes. Like how big yes. is the tube? No homo. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, I don't think it comes in tubes. That would have to come in a pump. It, it comes in a little egg. <laughs> in an egg. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For us common lotion Vaseline wears. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, right? Jurgens. Pump, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys ready? But to how start? was uh how, how was Europe? It was awesome. I had the best time. It was relaxing. It was rejuvenating. I updated my book. Bother you. Thank you. You didn't at all, really. Um, I updated my book, okay. which is great. So it'll drop in January now. It was really wonderful. I love it. So let me yeah. ask you a question. Sure. Is the, is the are people over there since they're closer to the war? Is it impacting or, or yes. has it affected how people? It's live, affected everything? their money. Yeah, it's yeah? affected their money a lot. Um, the oil prices are really high. London is really kind of fucked financially. Hmm. This is the first time in my life where the U.S. dollar ever equaled a pound. So it's extremely affordable for me to go there. It's equal now. And that's, I've never seen that. Right. And I've been to, I've been to London probably close to 10 times. And Paris is like one of your favorite cities. It is. Yes. Now for, for those people who have never gone. Mm-hmm. And make it inspired to go now that Wendy Day is gone. And, and Cal, we just talked about Cal did the jump man in front as of the, the Eiffel Tower. Yes. Right? Well, now, you know, people <laughs> make it inspired. Bad, you know what I mean? Right. I think Five everybody things should that travel. you have to do when you travel abroad. When you travel I heard, with like, abroad you have to use, or abroad? Like, coins to pay for the bathrooms everywhere in Europe. Is that true? Um, no, not all no of public them. public bathrooms? Yeah, but some do. Yeah. 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 Um, the first thing you should do is learn a little bit of the language so you can say, like, hello, goodbye, please, thank you. Because when you make Au effort... <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> when you make effort, it's just respectful. Mm. You know what I mean? It just shows that you're not being like a loud, obnoxious American. We've got a stereotype. All over the world. All yes, over we the do. world. Mm. And it's funny when I travel, I really see that. Like it really comes out. Yeah. Um, another thing you need to do is really hit all of the stuff that is of interest to you. So if you're interested in art, go to the Louvre. If you're interested in architecture, see the Eiffel Tower. For me, when I was in London, I went to the Cotwolds, which is about two hours west of London. I bought me a man and had him drive me in his Tesla of all cars right. out to the to the Cotwolds. And the buildings were like from a thousand AD or twelve wow. hundred AD. And we don't have anything that old here. Nothing yeah. goes back that far. And that was just really cool to like stand there and realize how many people came before us. And the doors are really short. The windows are really small. Well, to see that and then go back to your hotel room and look at, you know, the advancements that have yes. been made. Mm. And the fact that once you yes. leave, you're going to jump on an aluminum can with wings and fly exactly. to the other side of the world. Exactly. Pretty cool. N- not to mention that I stood on the front steps of a hotel and looked at a $1.5 million G-Wagon. It yeah, had Saudi person, plates. Yeah. Like that wow. was that was amazing to me, you know. And then I got to speak to him, which was even really more cool to find out like how he just travels the world. And he was born wealthy, so it wasn't weird to him to be, you know, to have that opulence. And I see your food bold. Is there was there, was there a lot of like eats and stuff yes. or American eats and yes. stuff like that? Yeah. Um, I I would yes. a hamburger, chicken nugget eat. eating person be able to go over there and find oh, yeah. what they need? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. You you the eating is cleaner there. You know, there's less antibiotics in the meat. There's less... Hmm. Interesting. It, like, organic is normal there. Okay. Nice. They have... You can go to a, a grocery store, but they're... In, in, in Paris and in France, they're they're lesser than they are here. You go to the 
to the bread store to buy bread. You go to the cheese shop to get cheese. You mm. go to the meat, the butcher to get meat. Like mm. it's all individualized, it's individualized. which to me yeah. is better. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I was watching one of the documentaries on um, the touchless stores in Asia, for example. Right. How they have one of the, the it's 3D screens. So when you walk up to the checkout, they have the camera like on the side. You can't see anything. But from the front, it's all he's touching the air. And he's calculating and oh, he pays cool. and, and gets his bread and everything. And then he walks out of the store. He didn't touch anything but the stuff he grabbed off the shelf, which was pretty That's cool. That's really cool. Mm. So a lot of different countries have different things. Their phones, which yes, is everything really cool. is digital. Yeah, he scanned his phone over. I, I ate it. like incredibly both in London and in Paris. And I came home 10 pounds lighter. What are they listening to over there? A little baby going Don't crazy? Know. Didn't even did nothing didn't, music oriented. Nothing, nothing do, work oriented. Do they have like it. radio there? Yes, they have okay. the BBC. Tim Westwood. Yeah. Yeah. Westwood Radio, yeah. is he still on there? I don't know. I didn't listen. I did nothing work related. When okay. I say Good for nothing, you. that's great. If I Good heard music, you. I put my fingers in my ears. Good for you. Okay. Yeah, I just needed to get away. Like I was burnt out when I, I got on that plane. I was tired as fuck. And well. you said you, you, you got to back into the, the book, chat. so we're excited. Yes. So this is part two of how to get a record deal. What is this book? Yes, it's the it's the current the version. It's the yeah, if you updated. Will. The is updated it revised? Version. Yes. Updated, revised, abridged. Yes. What, what, what what are we calling this? Um, I call it updated. The remix. 2.0, 3.0 revised. actually. I like revised or 2.0. Yeah. I'm going to change the cover this time around and print nice. hard copies, which I've never done before. Oh, yeah. Nice. I forced everybody to go digital because nobody was reading on their phones when I first put the book out. So oh, my I kind God. Of so, are, so is there a possibility for a book tour? No. Are we going to hear it here first? <laughs> no. Goodness. Shoot. Hated it. I would love Fuck it. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm about to pick y'all brains today. Okay, let's do it. Is there any point in time when a musician should say, should say, okay, this is not working. I need to stop. God, mm. yes. Um, it depends on why you're doing it. If you're doing it because you're a true artist and you absolutely can't not make music, sometimes for an artist, art is like, it's like throwing up. Like you can't hold it in. You've got to let it out, mm. you know? So if you're that type of artist, you're, you shouldn't stop, no. But if you're doing this for income and you can't make money and you can't build a fan base, yeah, yeah, hmm. you should stop. I think, you know, the arts and culture, you know, there's, there, can be, there are people that are novice, there are people that are hobbyists, there are people that are enthusiasts, and there are people that are professionals in every field. And... You know, at some point in time, in the beginning, hopefully, you're, you're going to decide if this is something that you want to pursue full time. So maybe recording music may not be your lane because as you were trying to become an artist, you found your niche in production or you found your niche in promotions or you found your niche in uh, management or, or whatever it is, you know, in the midst of you songwriting, in the midst of you trying to become an artist. So, you know... But as far as like when you, I mean, I think we've said it on one of the first episodes. Wendy looked me in the face and said it. Like if you if you get started in this and you want to walk away, fuck you, don't come back. Mm. So I think that applies to like if I come, never gonna tell you to quit. If, do you? If you want to do music and you want to do it every single day, at some point in time you have to be willing to learn how to do it right. But until you're That's ready to point. do this to make money, then you're a hobbyist. Why would we ever tell somebody to stop? A hobby is something that they find peace in, something that they right. find solace or comfort in. And if somebody can find comfort in playing a guitar or writing a record or writing a rap or downloading beats from YouTube or whatever it is, but don't fancy yourself a rapper. Right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you can you can be a basket, you can play basketball at the, at the Y. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're a basketball player. player. Right. Right. Professionally. So, you know, on, on, in that regards, I don't think there's ever an age. I mean, Lil Wayne is. 40, he just, the Louisiana Fest is one of the most popular concerts to go on every single year. Little Wayne not in his 40s yet? Gotta be Should close be to it. 45. Right. How old is 2 chains? I'm not trying to date anybody, yeah. but I'm trying to give you art. These guys are, we won't call them old, we'll call them vets. These guys are seasoned. Yeah. And these guys still make phenomenal music. Yeah. They, they happen the to families. learn how to make the business part of it early into it. Mm. Mm. So that they're not dropping 17 mixtapes and 12 SoundCloud profiles later, and they're still trying to release a single because, hey, big bro, you got to, you know, mess with me. At that point in time, then, you know, that's the people around you, bro. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not going to tell you that it sucks. Every time you release a record, if nobody listens, you feel me? Mm. So. Okay. 
Uh, let's talk about touring. How does an artist try to be added on tour? Can they pay to be on tour? Yeah, of course they can. You can pay to be on anything in the music business. You can pay to you can pay to open up for anybody. You can shit if you're smart enough, you'll get you a permit. And and you can't. I can't pay to perform. Cool. I'm gonna give me a fucking permit, and I'm gonna open up in the parking lot across the street. I'm gonna put a stage out there, and I'm performing every 15 minute intervals for the people walk up. <laughs> Listen, man. It all depends on what you want to do. Starting to tour is as easy as knowing what markets your music has impacted. Just because you want to go to Miami doesn't mean that there's a market for you in Miami. I know you want to go perform in front of New York City and Radio City Music Hall, and, and you're ready to jump at the go chance to go perform at the Louisiana Fest or wherever it is, but if your music isn't impacting there, if it isn't reaching there, then are you going there to build fans or are you going there to boast that you performed? Boasting that you performed, that's not going to equal a fan base. No. You know what I'm and people don't go to shows to discover music. No. So the fans are there to see whoever they're there to see. Their favorites. They're not, yes, they're not there to see a new artist perform his whole album or her, her whole album. Mm. They're there because they want to see the person that they love and paid money to see. So rather than buy your way onto a tour, why not put that money into building your fan base and build a buzz and then perform when that fan base actually wants to see you. So if an artist does perform early or opens up for the act that people are there to see, should they keep their show at a minimum? <clears throat> like not a I long would, set? Yeah, I would do three, three songs and get off the nobody, stage. Nobody cares about your greatest misses. You're going to have to get on stage and throw up on yourself and light yourself on fire for anybody <laughs> to remember you. I didn't come here to see you. I came here to see Lotto and the City Girls. Beat it, buddy. That's yeah. literally the mentality of these artists. They're getting drinks. They're getting concessions. They're doing all of these things. When you're up there at, as an independent artist and you're opening up for these guys, that's where you make the movie. That's where your team is going down there grabbing the footage of you. That's where you, you're you going to make your digital footprint on the recap. You're going to make sure that your name was mentioned on the ticket sales so you can have a digital footprint that you opened up for these artists so you could use that for touring support in case you have, I don't know, a relationship with AG is doing tours now. Let's say you have a relationship with AG Rod and tour, you can actually. prove the Rod Wave tour, which just sold out in, in D.C., by the way. Yeah. But awesome. let's say you, you have a relationship with these guys and you're able to say, hey, you guys are going to be in D.C. I've done six shows at, at the, at the uh, such such center in D.C. You know, it's a way for you to leverage. Just because you have music on a DSP does not mean that anybody is required to put it on a playlist. So just because you can perform a dope record does not mean that anybody has to put you on their stage. There are people that have hundreds of thousands of followers that couldn't pick a pack a venue with 20 people in it. Right. You see what I'm saying to you? Mm. So to go on a tour, man, I don't know. I'd say stay intimate. Find you a small venue first and, 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 and go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. You know, if you're going to Miami for Art Basel and you're thinking you're going to go down there and you're going to perform your way to the top, that's not what Art Basel is. Art Basel, they're allowing you to perform now because it's a money grab, mm -hmm. because they know you're dumb enough to come down there and perform in front of other people. Art Basel is for artists to go down there. So if you're not going down there trying to figure out how you can get in tune with an artist so that you can come up with a clever clothing line or a capsule or some merch or trying to figure out if you can get one of these artists to create a canvas while you make a song to it and then you guys auction that off. If you're not trying to figure out these new and clever and ingenious ways to incorporate your music with the art world, then you're wasting your time and your money and your effort. And that's when it becomes expensive. Mm -hmm. That's when going on a tour is not worth it because you're going to spend more money to celebrate the fact that you're on tour than you will trying to build a fan base from that tour. Because you can't build a fan base if nobody knows who you are. If exactly. you're not out there pushing it and promoting it. And when you do, what are you telling them? Man, download me on what platform? Apple Music, you ain't updated. Spotify, you got four of them. Deezer, who? SoundCloud, don't use it. My mixtapes, what? They still use that? YouTube, come on, bro. They got commercials. Everybody's going to give you a different excuse, so you have to be able to have all of your music optimized on all of those platforms because people are still using those platforms. Yes, people still use my mixtapes and Spinrilla mm. and YouTube and YouTube Music yeah. and Deezer and yeah. Tidal so much so that all those guys just unveiled Spotify, brought it out of them. Deezer has the My Deezer year. Mm -hmm. Apple Music just unveiled their recap. Mm -hmm. YouTube Music has their recap. So all of these guys are starting to share the engagement because it's a rat race for attention. Mm. You can build, you can tour, man. It's just going to be very expensive. Okay. Dear Cheat Code, I'm a loyal cheat coder. 
And my question is, in y'all professional opinions, why is it so difficult for songwriters to blow and really start to make real money? If we are creating the music um, and the songs are getting placements, how come it takes us longer to get the respect we, we deserve? Because you're not in the forefront. The artists are. The, the, the successful songwriters are, though. Like, when you, start, when you start looking to buy songs, you learn very quickly who the key players are, like who the guys with value or the ladies with value are. So in the industry, they're very well-known and very well-respected. But fans don't necessarily hear a song and then say, oh, that was written by so-and-so, you know, Pooh Bear or whoever. It was never meant for the songwriter to be in the spotlight. They were always in the background. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. Like, respect. you want recognition. And why is fame, why is fame valuable? You want valuable? recognition. Yeah, you want to be recognized. You want to be, oh, you're the guy that wrote the hit for Cardi B. Is that supposed to be like... I, I wrote the song, so I'm supposed to be as big as her? Is that the mentality? Like, I don't yeah, know. I, a, I, it was never meant to be know. that, they though. Say, how come it takes us longer to get the respect we deserve? So maybe maybe they don't, maybe that question isn't about fame. Maybe that question is they're in the industry and they're trying to write songs, like for the bigger artists, like Weekend and Drake. People won't you know, take whoever, them serious and won't allow them to get in the room. And they can't get there fast enough. Maybe that's the issue. But until you have hit records with an S under your belt, you're not taken seriously because this is an industry of money. It's money driven. It's success driven. So until you've got a proven track record, because everybody I know says they can make a hit record. And if they say that, how come they haven't? Like, where are the hit records? You know, I mean, on, on the flip side to it, you look at what's going on now with all of these guys with, you know, Drake when... You know, it, it was Quentin Miller was brought up that, you know, he was helping him write with songs. Or now that London J, uh, now that they leaked 130 Lotto songs, and now, oh, London J is the writer behind it. That does not take anything away from those artists that recorded and performed and videoed and social media those songs to the top. Those people were contributors the same way the engineer was a contributor. If, if you don't think the engineer is as important as the songwriter, fuck, ask Future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. there was, there's a team that puts hit records together. Right. What we should be talking about is why is it that in urban music, having a team to help you create a hit record is frowned upon? It's not. Why is having a writer frowned upon? Why it's is not. You don't write your own shit. You don't do this and you don't do that. And I'm not going to dance and I'm not going to do all of the. You don't want to be an entertainer. You just want to be rich and famous for doing nothing. And that really baffles me, man. It really, <laughs> really baffles me because people want to. And I'm not saying this, this in particular individual here, but. Just using in that general. as an example, like in general, if you're a songwriter and you're writing songs and you're only writing rap songs, then you've limited yourself. Are you writing jingles? Get in the building. If you have to take out the trash to get in the building and get to work 45 minutes early and find who the people are, God damn it, that's what the fuck it takes. Y'all want to get in the building and want to get right in the lineup out the gate, hitting home runs and throwing touchdowns. Get in the building first. Once you get in the building and you make a right, you make enough right, you'll be able to walk in there and see who's slacking. You can walk into a room and know who's there eating shit, know who doesn't belong there, and you outwork the fuck out of them in everybody's face, and, and you are unapologetically place. about it. I seen a, a, a video the other day that kind of it gave me a little fire. They were showing the McDonald's commercial. And where the guy from McDonald's, Ray, says, in the business is war. It's dog eat dog. If my competitor was drowning, I'm going to run over there and I'm going to shove the hose in his mouth. And if you don't think that's what it takes for you to be successful, that's the mentality. Get in the building, outwork everybody, and you will be successful. You're never going to get in the building wondering how you get in the building from the outside. Like, how do I get it? Like the Mervyn's commercial. Like, open, right. open, open. Back in the, come on, man. Let's not forget, London J was once a rapper, and he was on Grand Hustle. I was there. I remember. He was trying to figure Let's this shit out. Let's not forget, London J is at the studio seven days a week yep. in one of the most prominent musical cities in the country, if you will. Let's not forget that London J showed up to work every day, brought a bag lunch if he had to. Every day. And he doesn't want the attention. As a matter of fact, he posted a picture of Lotto to celebrate. Like, he bigged her up. 
Because at the end of the day, man, I'd rather be a rich nobody than broke with a name, man. So if you're if you're blessed Say enough to be again. out here and and write songs for these people and help them get to the next level, man, show up to work every day and do that. Let's not only think about rap. Let's think about jingles. Let's think about social media. Let's think about video games. Let's think about movies. Let's think about the adult industry. Let's think about brands. Let's think about, have you started to incorporate AI into that process? There are companies that are doing away with what we thought was once so valuable. There's a company in China right now that has 100 charting songs, completely AI, written, recorded, performed, produced. The whole no human being was involved in it. And you're worrying about why you're not getting the respect? You better worry about how you can outwork this computer that can never, never mimic human emotion to write a record. The mm. pain and the passion that you're going to pull from your heart, through your body, out of that pen and onto that piece of paper can never be replicated by any machine. That's what will keep you and set you apart. But make no mistake, they are on your ass. Everybody, graphic designers, producers, videographers, clothing designers, AI. We've been training it for the last umpteen years, and it is on our ass. And we better figure out how we're going to work with it instead of working against it because you're going to be mad. Mm. I'm on the outside looking in. All right, bitch. It's a machine that's going to write a hit record based off of the 70,000 records that drop every single day. Think about that, bro. Think about how much music we pump into the machine and tell it how not to make music. 100,000 records a day, somebody is keeping tabs on which one of those are not moving. And the day is coming when all of that shit is going to come down. Mark my words, 2023, 2024 will be the year of rude awakening for a lot of people. Mm. That catalog that you valued so much that nobody listened to, you're either going to have to pay to keep it up at an obscene rate or that shit will come down, buddy, because it's too expensive to keep it up. There's too much of it dropping. Do y'all want to know what, what half of the Black Friday sales were? Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, mobile video games. 50% of all holiday weekend sales were mobile mm. video games. I want to let that sit on your mind for a minute. And you're worried about getting respect as a writer. Buddy, you better evolve or get left out. Mm. Cheat code. Cheat code.